Hey guys, Alex from Board Game Co. over here, and we're doing another daily video while still doing shelter at home, stay at home in Ohio. In today's video, we're going to do a top 10 list of free games you can play online. I it thought of this yesterday that it's probably a good idea to do this list, as I've actually really been struggling trying to find games that I enjoy playing online. There are a lot of good options out there, but there's not a ton of overlap with my own personal collection and my own personal preferences. So I've had to readjust to considering games that either I've never really looked at before or games that left my collection for a variety of reasons, but I'm willing to play them online. So I thought I'd go over them, and I was going to initially combine a bunch of platforms, but in the end I decided to do a separate video for each of the platforms. For sure, Board Game Arena and Yukata, perhaps others will see. So this list is top 10 games you can play online, specifically on Board Game Arena, and specifically for free. None of these options require paying for at all. They are all under the free plan. And starting off with number one on the list, number one on the list, we have Can't Stop. Can't Stop, right behind me over there, is a great starting point if you haven't played board games off online before. One of the problems with playing board games online is that there's less tolerance for being a new player. It's a little harder to jump straight in, expected to know the rules and to keep up with other people. And this is easier if you're playing with friends you already know. If you're playing with friends you already know, go ahead and download Zoom. They have free accounts. Set up a Zoom or whatever, or maybe any other any of these other services like Discord or whatnot, and just talk to your friends while they teach you and interact you and guide you. But if you're playing with strangers, Can't Stop is definitely a great first choice. It plays quickly, it is easy to pick up, very easy to learn, read the rules, learn them, and it's very, very simple to pick up the user interface. So this is a great game, both in the fact that it's a great game, it's still in my collection right behind me, as well as the fact that it's easy, it's a good starting point for an online platform when you can't, when you're, when you're a little worried about what you're jumping into and what you're committing to. So Can't Stop is number one, the basic principle of the game is you roll dice, trying to move up a track, and then after you roll, you can keep rolling or you can stop. If you keep going, you can advance further and further and further. But if you ever fail, if you ever don't get what you need, you reset all your progress. It is an addictive push your luck game. It is super fun, super entertaining, teaches quickly, plays quickly, and just has a ton of oh moments. There's a ton of moments where people are just going, oh, no, no, roll more. And then you start getting baited. You start bait the other players into trying to, no, just go one more, go one more. You can make it. You want to lock it in. And then it's hilariously fun to play. You have less of that online, but it's still an incredible game to play online. Number two on the list is Coloretto. Coloretto is a great game recommended with three to four, maybe three, four, five players. It is a simple, simple set collection game where again, this is a good next step on, on Board Game Arena. It's simple, it's very simple to face, not a lot going on, very good, very easy to pick up. In Coloretto, you're constantly trying to collect sets of colors. The problem is, this is a classic you build, they pick kind of situation. What happens is each turn you're going to take a card and then you either put a card down or instead of picking a card you can instead uh, collect a set of cards that are already built by other players. So you're, every time you're like, well, well, maybe that, maybe those two cards are good enough for me. Maybe I'll take those. Or maybe I draw another card, but then you have to place it somewhere else, giving someone else the opportunity to take a set. So there's this constant tension of trying to build a better selection of cards to take for yourself versus knowing that as you do that, you're incentivizing other players to get there first, to take that set of cards. It is a very, very fun and tight game with a lot of a lot of interesting decisions to be made along the way. And it's, again, simple to pick up, great user interface, it's a great game, and it is still in my collection. Number three on the list is Stone Age. Stone Age is an incredibly easy to pick up game. No longer my collection. I got rid of it a while ago, but I had it for quite a few years before I did. It's a worker placement game where you're just putting up workers to collect various resources, trading those resources in for cards and or huts, both of which will give you different ways of scoring. It is the definitive entry level worker placement game, possibly replaced by Lords of Waterdeep in that genre in terms of entry level worker placement games, but it did a tremendous job back in the day and it continues to do a tremendous job nowadays. And in terms of what's available online, it's online and some of the others aren't. So this is a great choice. It is a lot of fun. It is easy to teach. This one's a little bit of a step up in terms of that user interface if you're not comfortable with it, if you don't know what you're getting yourself into. That being said, if you pick up the rules and or if you're playing with friends, it is still a great choice to play online. 
Number four on the list, we have Seasons. Seasons is another game that I no longer have in my collection, but I've constantly debated getting it back. It was thoroughly enjoyable for a, uh, for quite some time, and I'll explain why I got rid of it shortly. But in Seasons, you start the game by drafting a set of power cards, and then those power cards basically define how you're going to play out over the next the, over the rest of the game. And you can get a few more power cards throughout the game, and then it's, it, there's these constant decisions you're trying to make in terms of maximizing your power card plays. Do I play this card before that card? Do I get these resources, these crystals, and then trade them in, and then then play that card? You're constantly trying to get as many power cards in play as possible within the confines of the system, and each of the power cards interplay off each other's in such entertaining ways. This is a, a combo-heavy game that just feels fantastic. I personally got rid of it in the end because I love the, the interchanging, the interplay of the cards themselves. I wasn't as much a huge fan of the rest of the whole crystal generating and points thing going on behind it. So while it, it stayed in my collection for quite some time and the end it felt a little clunky and left, but in terms of games online, it is a great game. Like I said, I constantly debate getting my copy back. It, it was a, an incredible experience while it lasted and I will be playing it over the next few weeks while we're all stuck at home. Number five on the list is Kalis. Kalis is actually, as well, it's gone from my collection, but only because I'm waiting for the new version to come, that's coming out. So I don't, I temporarily don't have it, but I plan on having it again. But Kalis is, again, one of the definitive granddaddy worker placement games, not considered an entry level by any means. This is a tight, tight, tense strategy game with no room for error. This is a game where you cannot make the wrong decision or you might be out of luck. I mean, this is a, you're constantly trying to move your, your you're, put, you're putting your guys down in various spots, getting various benefits, building various buildings. But one of the things that's incredibly mean and tight about this game is there's this provost who moves back and forth on the track that can stop other players from being able to take their actions. So you're trying to gamble, well, if I can control where he is, then I can take these actions that are really beneficial to me. But if I can't, then I can't. It's very, very tight. It's one of those games that it's a little longer to play in real life. One of the nice things about playing online games is some of these heavier games that might be too much of a commitment in real life. Online, they have a way of moving much faster. They just, it goes through significantly faster and sometimes can be half as much in terms of the length. So Kalis is a great choice if it's one that was always felt a little too long for what it was. Well, if you're playing the online version, that'll be perfect. It'll be shorter and it'll be, you'll feel right at home. Number six on the list is another one in terms of those long games that can be condensed, is Tolkien. Now I debated putting Tolkien on this list because I very much got, I got rid of Tolkien for my own collection after only one play, but I did think it was a great game. I just didn't think it was worth the amount of time it took, which is why I put it on this list. Because I would happily play Tolkien online if it plays in an hour and a half, two hours. My problem was Tolkien in our group took us four hours to play, and that was way too long for what it was. Now, I'm not saying it'll take everyone four hours, but for our group it was four hours, and I just felt it was twice as long as it was worth. Now, playing it online, I would happily play it. Tolkien has another worker placement game, there's a lot of these apparently. Tolkien is another worker placement game, where you have this whole gear engine that is fascinating. You put guys down on gears, and then as the central gear turns, all your guys turn as well, earning themselves a more powerful action. And then at a certain point, you take all your guys off the gears, earning all these actions that have slowly been investing, so to speak, as the gears turned. It is a fascinating system. It's a fascinating little, it's a, it was decried as a gimmick to a certain point, and it is a gimmick, but it's a gimmick that works. It's a gimmick that does something well. It looks good, it feels great, and it actually works in the system. Gimmicks are stupid if they don't actually deliver. This gimmick delivered 100%. So for me, I highly recommend Sulkin as a two hour game. I don't recommend it as a four hour game, but a lot of people do. So, you know, either way, it's worth trying. Number seven on this list is Tobago. Tobago is an excellent, excellent, fun little treasure hunting game on an island. You basically have your, all the players are down on an island. You're moving a little jeep around and you're slowly unveiling where the treasure is as you play these clue cards. Now, the clue cards don't actually show you where the treasure is. The clue cards define where the treasure is, meaning as you play a clue card, you will slowly eliminate the possible places where the treasure could be. And then players will go pick that up and collect the treasure and get points. And it's and you also, everyone who played a clue card toward the treasure will have a, a potential part of the actual treasure that gets revealed. It is a very, very well done game. Lots of bluffing, lots of interesting card play, lots of, you know, your Jeep's on this side of the island, so if I play this clue card, now you have to go to that side of the island. It's, it's a very, 
It's a very interesting game. One of the things I always liked about Tobago is how it felt unique. Tobago stuck around in my collection for a long time. It's another one that I constantly debate getting back. It, it's it stuck around for my collection for a long time because of how unique it felt. I couldn't really compare it to other games. Meaning one of the things I've always said is when I can say I'd rather play game X than game Y, well then I get rid of game Y if I don't have enough time and it's not hitting the table. But Tobago always felt incredibly unique and there was nothing that I ever really felt I could compare it to. Which is why it stayed in my collection for a long time and it's why I constantly debate getting it back. Number 8 on this list is Tarji. Tarji is a great 2 player worker placement, again, kind of worker placement, it's a little different, but Tarji is a two player game, two player head to head game where you are putting your guys on these spots across the two to kind of narrow down which resources, and then not only do you get the spots where your guys go, but you also get the interconnected lines where your guys overlay each other. Tarji is a game that I actually got rid of after, after like five or six games, but I've been playing it online recently because of this whole shelter at home thing, and I've been enjoying it so much that I actually already got it back. So Seasons in Tobago are still, I'm still debating, but for Taji, I got it back, I'm, I'm getting it back, and I, I'm really, really enjoying it. It's an excellent two-player card game, incredibly strategic, incredibly rewarding, lots of good, lots of good play on that game. Number nine is Twa, or I often go back and forth. It's, it looks like Troyes, but it's, I believe it's pronounced Twa. Twa is a city in France, I believe, but Twa is a not really a worker placement game. I don't think it's worker placement at all. There's some dice placement. You're, you're, spinning, you're rolling dice, and then you're trying to barter for those dice back and forth, and then you're using those dice for various actions. So it's dice placement, but you can buy your opponent's dice, which is a lot of fun. But also, there's these cards in play. And these cards are amazingly fun. These cards are amazingly rewarding. You sit there and you say, well, if I get, if I lock down positioning on this card, I'll have the ability to turn these dice into those dice. If I lock down my positioning on these cards, then I'll have the ability to add three to every, each one of my red dice. And each of these cards com gives you an, a unique advantage. And then the more cards you get, the more you can build up this combination of abilities that really interplays well with each other and hopefully delivers you the win. It is possibly... Well, well, actually, there's one more game to go, so I'll hold off, but it's one of the more rewarding games on this list for me. It is in my top, I don't know, it's, it's a very, very well-rated game in my collection. I thoroughly enjoy playing it. Every time I pull it out, it's an absolute blast. And finally, number 10 on this list is Through the Ages, A New Story of Civilization, again behind me. This is a great, 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 great game. It is an investment to, to sit down and play. It's an investment even online or not. They have an app. It's a great implementation of the app. I do recommend that as well. But Through the Ages is an incredibly rewarding civilization tableau building game. This is not a dudes on the map civilization game where you march armies around the board. This is a civilization game where you buy cards from a card row that consistently give you various things. It gives you access to new buildings, gives you access to leaders, gives you access to new unit types, all new technologies. Everything you do is built wonders. They're all built through the form of taking cards from a card row. And while you take it, you're also denying your opponent that card. Now, some of the more core technologies, there are duplicates, so multiple players can actually get access to those cards. This is one of the most rewarding civilization games I have ever played and expect to ever play. The biggest flaw with it is how difficult it can be to get to the table, which once again, an online implementation drastically helps when you're having that kind of conversation. That's this list. That These are the list of games you can play on Board Game Arena. One thing I should have mentioned at the beginning is Board Game Arena is live play. Some of these other sites we have, like Yukata, which I'll do another video series on, Yukata has turn-based play. Board Game Arena has both live and turn-based. So you can select when you're playing a game whether you want to be emailed when it's your turn or that you're playing live with real players waiting on you. It is a great, I mean, I do recommend turn-based at first if you don't know the system. There's less of a pressure of people waiting on you while you try to figure out what to do. Unless you're starting with something like Can't Stop or Colorado that are simple enough that you don't have to worry about that assuming you walk in knowing the rules. That's the list of the top 10 games I believe you can play on Board Game Arena. I will be doing another list for Yukata at some point in the next week or so. Uh, I hope you enjoy this list. Let me know what you've been doing. What have you been doing to survive this whole... So social distancing, shelter at home, stay at home, whatever whatever you're doing, whatever place you are. Let me know what you've been playing. Which games are your favorite from this list? Which games do you recommend? There were a bunch of games that I did not mention because I simply hadn't played them. And I don't know 
where they rank in terms of anything. I also did avoid anything that required any form of payment for this list and the list coming forward. I will include a link to Board Game Arena down below. Other than that, you can subscribe to this video, you can ring the bell for notifications, you can like this video, comment, let me know, I always appreciate it. And if you want to support this channel, head on over to BoardGameCo.com, buy a game, sell us your games, trade us your games, we're here for you both in terms of the general hobby and all the fun involved, as well as our actual store as well. Hope you enjoyed, and until next time, have a good one.